This is the HP Stream 7 and I paid 25 bucks for it. It shipped with Windows 8.1, it's from 2014 and on paper it's adorable. A 7 inch tablet with an Intel Atom inside. And in practice, it's the kind of thing that feels nostalgic and painfully slow at the same time. So today, I'm not doing a full teardown or a huge upgrade, not yet. For this video, we're just going to live with it, feel it out, and see whether a $25 Windows tablet has any business existing in 2025. So let's get started. So quick backstory, I found this thing on eBay and it had a price that made me instantly want to get it. And I honestly like these kinds of buys. It's cheap, slightly mysterious and ripe for content. The Stream 7 usually pops up in lots. Sometimes listed as untested, sometimes works with a charger included. Now, why buy these things? Well, two reasons. One, nostalgia. People love a good throwback to these weird Windows tablets from the 2010s. Two, they're cheap hardware with Intel inside. That basically means when Windows chokes, you can install Linux on an Intel device and usually get properly acceptable performance. And that's the angle for part two of this series. But for now, I want you to approach it like a normal person would, so we'll get started in a moment. Now, important note for people who are interested in these kinds of tablets. Condition varies wildly. This one does indeed boot, but the screen has some tiny little scratches on the the battery is alright on this thing, however some Stream 7s do show up with missing or dead batteries. So make sure you watch the listing photos and ask the seller if you're buying one. I paid $25 for this thing which is the sweet spot for a test like this. It's honestly cheap enough to not feel guilty if it's trash. Okay, now let's talk about the hardware for this thing because this explains most of the experience. The HP Stream 7 comes with an Intel Atom Z3735G processor. You've probably seen that exact same processor in my Intel Compute Stick video if you've been watching long enough. Except the G variant of the Intel Atom Z3735F has a 25% performance increase. It's a quad-core bay trail chip designed for low-power devices. Alright, now as for RAM, the Stream 7 comes with 1GB of memory, which is like absolutely nothing in 2025. So um, stay tuned to see how things are going to work out with that. Storage is 32 gigabytes of VMMC. And now of that, Windows has probably already eaten a chunk of that. So usable space is going to be painfully small. Now as for the screen, the screen's 7 inches at 1280 by 800, which still looks okay for reading or casual media. And it's honestly a really nice display. If I'm going to be honest with you, the colours look really nice in this thing. It's honestly not that bad for a budget device. The build is mostly plastic with a little bit of weight to it. And it's honestly thin enough to feel like an honest little device in a brick like the first gen iPad. Alright, now let's go ahead and get started with actually using this thing. So once you've got everything set up with your Microsoft account and everything else, you will have the traditional Windows 8.1 experience. So let's hop into PC settings. For some reason, it's not called settings or control panel. It's called PC settings. I've honestly never used Windows 8.1 before, so, so the names are probably different for each of these things. And let's just go ahead and check out everything on this device. So if you go to PC and devices and we go to PC info, we should get the list of specifications that we've got. So I mean, yeah, it's just a typical uh, Windows 8.1 mobile device. And once again, we're rocking the puny Intel Atom that we've got here and one gigabyte of memory. And I mean, wow, a 32-bit operating system. That's really not great in 2025. So let's go back home and let's just check out the traditional Windows 8.1 experience before we hop into the desktop and try gaming. So as far as I'm aware, a lot of these apps are a bit broken and some apps just don't flat up work at all. So I mean, let's just go ahead and check them out. So the first app that I think we should try out is the weather app. Let's see if the services are still up for this thing. So if we press the weather app, it should just take us there. And wow, last updated June 18th, 2012. So yeah, I don't think the weather app works at all. Like if I keep pressing try again, it'll just show that error again. So yeah, I'm pretty sure the services are down for this thing. That's unfortunate. All right, now let's see if the sports app works. And okay, that doesn't work at all either. It shows that same error that we saw in the weather app. Oh, huh, that's unfortunate. Okay, how about the news app? Let's see if that works at all. But then again, I'm honestly not surprised a lot of these services shut down because, I mean, by the looks of it, nothing loads on the news app. Interesting. Um, in this case, it doesn't actually show that error that we've got before. And this time we've got a search news um, little icon dialog thing text box there. So. Hmm, what should we search up? Let's search up drug trafficking. Let's see if there's um, any reports on that. Huh, okay, so it does load when you search the um, thing that you want to find up in the uh, search box. 
Penascola attempted murder suspect now facing drug. So I mean, by the looks of it, it's just a basic like web browser dedicated towards news because it just loads Yahoo News. And it surprisingly does load like the images and stuff and the uh, text. So I mean, that's good to know that at least the news app is partially working on this thing. Right now, one application that I actually am curious about is the Microsoft Store, because as far as I'm aware, the Microsoft Store is unfortunately down for uh, Windows 8. Right, well, let's just say it's been a minute because this thing is absolutely stuck. It just gets stuck loading like in this infinite loop. So yeah, I don't think the Microsoft Store works on this anymore. That's pretty unfortunate. So I mean, the only way to get applications on this thing is to go to the desktop, which we'll be checking out in a few moments. Before we hop into the desktop, let's try out Internet Explorer for the last application on this thing. Alright, so I've just tried to hop into um, MSN. It does load partially. Some parts are kind of like stuck, like for example, these elements right there. They just don't load in fully on the screen for some reason. One thing I will say though, the colors on this display are really nice. Like everything looks pretty vibrant on this display. I mean, and we can see as well, MSN ending support for Internet Explorer. I'm honestly not surprised. Internet Explorer is really outdated and you should probably move to something like Firefox or Chrome. Or, I mean, just whatever web browser you're using on this. In this case, we're gonna try out Firefox. But I mean, yeah, a lot of websites just don't work. Let's go ahead and try out uh, YouTube, for example. So I did try out YouTube earlier on on this device and it just gets stuck into this. You can't really like load into any of the video links as well or anything like that. And it's pretty much the same case for the Nintendo 3DS web browser. It just gets stuck on this. So um, yeah, you're definitely going to need a modern day web browser for this tablet. All right, well, I think it's safe to leave the original user interface for Windows 8.1. Let's hop into the desktop. And it's as easy as just pressing this button right here that says desktop. So if we hop into that, it'll take us to the desktop. And as you can see, I've got a few applications that I wanted to try on this thing. So we'll go ahead and check them out in a few moments. This is just your typical touchscreen Windows 8.1 experience. Not the greatest in any way. Windows doesn't really have great touchscreen support, especially on like older versions. Windows 11 doesn't actually have that bad of um, touchscreen capability, but um, touchscreen on older Windows is a bit rough. And everything's just really inaccurate on like, especially like small, you know, UI elements like the close button. Sometimes I press the minimize button for some reason or the uh, full screen button. And it honestly can get like pretty annoying, like especially like just right there. Like I did not mean to open Windows help and support. And I've only got Half-Life 2 and Minecraft installed on this uh, little 32 gigabyte Windows tablet. And we've only got 1.57 gigabytes left out of the uh, 23 gigabytes that we've got. Now, I mean, getting Steam to work on this thing was a bit of a task to do. So, of course, as you probably already know, Steam doesn't support Windows 8.1 or below anymore. But if you go into the program files for Steam, so let's go ahead and um, do that. And I misclicked again. If you go into program files, oh my fucking god. If you go into program files and then you scroll down where you find uh, Steam, there's a folder called package. You got to delete that folder and you should be able to install Steam again. So if you're wondering how to get Steam working on um, older Windows versions, just do that and you'll be good to go. Just keep in mind you won't get any updates for the uh, client anymore. But yeah, once I had that sorted, Steam would work perfectly fine on this. It's a very laggy experience, so keep in mind it's literally uh, running on one gigabyte of memory. And the Steam store is known to be a bit heavy on um, older hardware. Like, I mean, th things just aren't loading in right now, like, oh my god. Once you give it like a minute or two, it'll load in everything perfectly fine. But in general, it's just a really choppy experience, and sometimes it just doesn't respond at all for some reason. Why am I saying for some reason? I keep forgetting this thing has one gigabyte of memory. Let me just show you how much memory is being used right now. Let me minimize Steam, and let's go to the uh, task manager. There we go. And if we go to more details, we can see that 87% of the memory is being used right now. I've literally never seen Steam use 10 megabytes of memory before. <laughs> that is actually really funny. And all the other applications are taking over like 0.1 megabytes. So I mean, it just proves how like chopped down they had to make Windows 8 to run on older hardware like this. I don't really know why I'm calling it old hardware because I mean, it is old hardware, but it was crap at the time anyway. But um, I think that's besides the point. Let's, let's do some gaming now. So let me hop, let me try hop into my library. It's really, really slow. <laughs> and of course, the first game I'm going to try out is Half-Life 2. If I'll be honest with you, Half-Life 2 can literally run on anything. Half-Life 2 ran on the Intel Compute Stick, and that has like 25% less performance than the uh, processor in this. 
but this has less RAM than the Intel Compute Stick. So I mean, let's just see how they uh, perform. It'd be interesting to see. So let's give Half-Life 2 a launch. It's definitely gonna take like an eternity to load. <laughs> My God, I, I regret saying that. It loaded in within like three seconds. You guys literally saw that. That's, that's pretty cool. Now you're probably wondering, how am I going to play Half-Life 2 with my hands? Oh, that my friends is where, is where this little bugger comes into play. It's basically just a micro USB hub that expands to USB-A. Now this HP tablet takes in micro USB as you can see, or you can't see. So yeah, this device takes in micro USB. Not only does it charge from micro USB, but you can also use accessories with this thing. So I mean, yeah, that's pretty nice. Um, I didn't even do anything with the tablet and it just died. Oh my goodness. Alright, after trying to reboot this thing, we're finally back in. So I mean, yeah, back to what I was talking about. Let's go ahead and hook up the keyboard to the tablet. So let me go ahead and do that. And I've already gone ahead and done the same for the mouse. And as you can see, it does work. It works flawlessly with this thing, so you can pretty much treat it like a desktop if you want. However, I don't recommend that. It's got an Intel Atom and one gigabyte of memory. So you would not want to be doing any desktop activities with this thing. All right, let's hop into Half-Life 2. I've already got a few saves loaded into my um, Steam install. So yeah, let's just hop into any one of them and let's see um, how the performance is in Half-Life 2. Before we hop in, here's a quick tea break. That was gross, I apologize for doing that. All right, and first impressions. The game looks like dog crap. I'm playing on the lowest settings, by the way. I forgot to show you guys the settings. I'm really sorry about that. So I mean, yeah, we're playing at 1280 by 800, which is the native resolution. I would go lower, but the performance is actually really nice on this. Yeah, everything is set to low. The model detail, the texture detail, the shader detail, everything else is all off. To give you guys a better view, let me just tilt the tablet a bit so you guys can see everything without the reflections of this really glossy screen. Alright, that's a lot better. So I mean, yeah, we're in like, technically the main C right now. And we seem to be running at like 40 to 50 FPS. I can go ahead and check. Let me go ahead and uh, just enable that real quick. So if we use CL underscore show FPS 1, it should show our FPS at the top. Yep. The FPS counter updates really quickly, unfortunately. But I mean, by the looks of it, it's going around like 30 to 50 FPS. Of course, usually depending on the location of, you know, where we're at. So I mean, yeah, you just gotta make the game look like crap in order to, you know, make it a playable experience on this Intel Atom. But I mean, yeah, it is a playable experience regardless. Like if you're okay with the crappy graphics, then I mean, by all means, this would be a great uh, mini Valve game device if you're interested in like Source Engine and stuff. And I died, okay. Now I would test Team Fortress 2, but I got VAC banned, so I can't really try that out, unfortunately. I can't even remember how I got VAC banned, so just don't ask. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, to conclude, just set all the graphics settings down and you'll have a fairly playable experience on this um, HP stream. All right, and for the last game that I wanna try out on this thing, let's try out Minecraft. Now, as for Minecraft, getting the Minecraft launcher to install is basically a similar story to how I got Steam installed. So apparently the Minecraft launcher just doesn't work on older Windows versions anymore. So I had to go to the alternative Minecraft launcher download and I downloaded the legacy Windows versions and, and thankfully that did work. So let's go ahead and open it up. And I mean, first impressions for the Minecraft launcher, this thing is really choppy. Like I'm trying to open up things right now and now the application just isn't responding. <laughs> Oh my god, now I think it's stuck. Yup. Now I would try Minecraft 1.21.8, but it says that your 32-bit system cannot run this version of Java. So we're gonna have to try out Minecraft 1.11. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and try out Minecraft 1.12 instead. Now I've already gone ahead and downloaded Minecraft 1.12 to save us some time. So let's see if this works. All right guys, so we're in Minecraft 1.12. Now let me go ahead and try and show you guys the graphic settings because I've already put them down. And hopefully these graphic settings should work. I've gone ahead and put the render distance up a bit. So let's see if this works. Let's go ahead and hop into a new world. And let's create it. And let's see how that runs. Oh. Oh my goodness. Where did everything go? Oh, there we go. Holy crap. This thing is chugging. Wow, 7, seven to 14 FPS. Jeez. Um, this is on the lowest settings. Now... Keep in mind, this is definitely performing a lot better than Minecraft on the Intel Compute Stick. 
So I mean that 25% performance increase definitely makes a difference in games like these, but regardless though, this is an Intel Atom, so it is gonna perform like dog crap, but I mean, I'm, I'm still surprised it loaded in. I mean, I'm pretty sure we can get higher frame rates if we set the render distance down. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's just chuck the render distance down to three chunks and let's see how that runs. That made a pretty big difference. We've got like two times the performance now. We're currently averaging like 26 to 35 FPS. Well, is this playable? If you don't mind setting all the graphics settings down and you know, having half of your map gone, then um, I'd say it's a pretty playable experience. We're not really experiencing any frame dips right now, any drastic ones, like, but I mean, regardless, I don't really recommend this. The uh, three chunks isn't really a lot. I would try a performance mod, but unfortunately I won't be able to do it in this video because we're running out of time here, but. All right, and now I'm stuck, so I'm pretty sure this is a great way to um, just end this gaming category off now. So Minecraft on the HP stream, not the greatest in any way, but it's definitely a lot better than the Intel Compute Stick. So the last thing that I want to try out on this thing is YouTube playback, the ultimate test for these things. For some reason, the Intel Atom just really does not like like daily web usage for some reason. So I'm pretty curious, let's see how YouTube runs on this thing. So you guys pretty much know the drill, we're going to try out 720p playback, then 1080p playback, and then 2k playback, and maybe 4k playback depending on how well it does. So I'm going to go ahead and try load up a Waffle TM video. Let's go ahead and try out the uh, budget home server video that I made a few weeks ago. Jesus Christ, this thing is taking the piss, it is so slow. One gigabyte of memory, it's really showing its uh, weaknesses here right now. <laughs> oh god. I love how the advertisement managed to load before all the other videos thumbnails. I don't even think this thing's gonna load the video because it's a bit stuck. Like, it's just stuck loading. Oh. Oh. Come on. Wow, this thing is really chugging. And all I did was press F on my keyboard so I'd full screen the video. And now it's freaking out. I think it's safe to say that this thing is just completely allergic to like web usage in general. This thing just really does not like the web. And it's definitely the amount of RAM that this thing has. It just, it's really bottlenecking the system. Yeah, I don't think this thing is going to get anywhere. It's just stuck loading. All right, well, that's pretty much it for this piece of crap. I don't really have anything else to say. If playback doesn't begin shortly, try restarting your device. Ugh. Okay, I'll give it this thing. So where exactly does that leave us? The HP stream is exactly what I expected. It's clunky, it's slow, and Windows 8.1 isn't exactly practical in 2025. Browsing the web is a literal patience test and storage fills up instantly. The whole thing literally constantly reminds you how far mobile hardware has come in the last decade. But for 25 bucks, I didn't buy this to be my daily driver by any means. I bought it to see what's left, to poke around, and to see if I could squeeze any life out of it. And in that sense, I guess it does deliver. I mean it boots, the screen is excellent, the battery is usable, and the intel inside means that it's not a dead end. Now would I recommend this to anyone as their main tablet? Well, absolutely not. But for a weird little experiment, this thing is perfect, and the intel inside means that it's not really a dead end. That's where we're heading next. In part 2, I'm going to wipe Windows entirely off of this thing and to try and make this tablet usable again in 2025 with Linux. So if you want to see this little Atom tablet reborn, stick around because that's where things get a lot more interesting. So if you liked what you saw, then definitely consider liking the video and subscribing. Feel free to join the Discord server too, I'll leave that in the description below. And with that, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.